Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship from Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church. We're located at 60th and Swanson Streets here in Omaha, Nebraska. We will have our parking lot worship broadcast over the FM radio each Sunday at 10 a.m., as well as the service each week on Facebook. Uh, next week, Easter Sunday, we will worship inside the sanctuary with COVID safety procedures in place and required at both the 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. worship service. If you would like to attend and have not yet been contacted for a reservation, please call the church office 402-571-7797 and leave the time of service that you would like to attend your name, how many will attend, and a return phone number. We will also have the service on Facebook for Easter Sunday, as well as broadcast um, into the parking lot at the 10 a.m. service as well. This begins Sunday. This Sunday begins our Holy Week in the church year. We will have a Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday worship on Facebook also. We will not have parking lot or in-person worship for either of these Holy Week services this year. Please know you can contact the church office or myself, Pastor Di, 402-320-0342 with prayer requests or questions. It's good to be able to gather as the people of God, whether it's a radio broadcast in the parking lot or Facebook or in person. So let us begin our worship of our King. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We join in our call to worship taken from Psalm 118. Oh, thank the Lord for he is good. His loving kindness is forever. Let the congregation of Israel praise him with these same words. His loving kindness is forever. And let the priests of Aaron chant, His loving kindness is forever. Let the Gentile converts chant, His loving kindness is forever. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Beloved Savior, we confess that too often we have shut out our neighbors and failed to hear their cries for help. We have fallen short of all that you have called us to do. Our hearts are shattered now by the many who are hurting and are in need. As we reach out to them, forgive us our past and help us to be the people that you have called us to be. Amen. Now hear the promise of forgiveness again, heard in the words from Psalm 118. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord has become my salvation. Know that Christ's forgiveness and love is our salvation. We are forgiven. Be at peace. Let us join in the prayer of the day together. Let us pray. God of joy and arrival, enter our lives. Has Christ entered Jerusalem? May we celebrate your coming. We cry out with the stones so that the world might hear your glad arrival. Yet do not leave us in the events to come. This joyous crowd which greets you will turn and flee. From a crowd of hosannas, we turn into a silent, denying crowd at the cross. Do not leave us in the events to come. Even though we may leave you, do not leave us, O Christ. Then forgive us so we can return to you changed. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel this day is according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethlehem and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, 
Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. But he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, usually on Palm Sunday, we open up with a celebration of the crowds. And oftentimes, we'll parade down the church aisles, waving palm branches. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem and is told by the Pharisees to quiet the crowd, to stop the disciples. And Jesus responds, if the people were silent, the stones would cry out. Jesus knew that the kingdom he was to establish was not of this earth. And we just didn't get it. People did not understand. We still don't understand. The kingdom Jesus came to establish is not the same as on earth. So that Sunday, Jesus began his final walk to Jerusalem. And he stops on the hill overlooking Jerusalem, called the Mount of Olives, where he had previously preached the Sermon on the Mount. And he looks over Jerusalem, and he wept over it. So this service on Palm Sunday is twofold. Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, surrounded by crowds, shouting his name, shouting their praises. But our service ends on a somber note. Yes, Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem, but he has not come to overturn the Roman government. Instead, Jesus has come to overturn death to free us from sin. And the only way Jesus could do that was through his own painful death on the cross. Well, the crowds cheering him on as he came into the gate soon would disappear as they were replaced with crowd chanting, crucify him. If someone turned on us like that, wouldn't we be angry? Wouldn't we not care what happened to those people? They deserted us, after all. Wouldn't we be angry? But Jesus forgives each of them, each of us, as a loving parent would forgive a naughty child. However, just as a loving parent, Jesus still was disappointed. He was full of sorrow, and he was moved to tears. 
It's easy to celebrate Jesus when we get to wave the palms, wearing our finest clothes, going up and down the aisles, singing Hosanna. Everybody loves a parade. Everybody loves to have something to cheer. It doesn't take too much on our part to do that, does it? We kind of get into that crowd mentality and we start our cheering. However, if we were to stop and think about the actual journey that Jesus is on, doesn't the cheering become a little harder? It's a little harder to celebrate. Palm Sunday reminds us that Jesus came to earth with a choice. We can stand and wave our palms and join the crowds that cheered Jesus on that day and watch him pass by. Or we can follow him and stand with him at the cross. It's easy to shout. It's a lot harder to serve. In the face of the pandemic this past year, we have seen, I think, the scripture with new eyes. We now know that there have been many doctors and nurses and police and firefighters, ambulance attendants, and many, many others who have died this past year from COVID-19 as they rushed into duty, putting others first. And now as we look back on this Palm Sunday, how many faced death serving others just as Jesus faced death coming into Jerusalem? This year, more than ever, we're on the brink of Holy Week, and we pause. And we look back at the darkness of this last year. But we also can look forward to the cross We look forward to the empty grave and the resurrection. Friends, the stones will cry out if we don't. We have hope. Darkness is not forever. Jesus will continue his journey to the cross. The grave will be empty. And so it is the resurrection that gives us reason to rejoice on this day, reason to shout out our hosannas to not be silent, to not stop on that parade route after Jesus passes by, but to continue, to continue with Jesus to the cross. As Jesus looked out over Jerusalem, he wept. He wept out of his love of the people and sorrow he had that they still did not understand the kingdom of God. He wept and was sorrowful that they did not understand that the eternal life one finds through the resurrection is the peace of the kingdom of God. It is the reason Jesus came. It is the reason for the parade. It's the reason for the hosannas. But the people of Israel rejected him. Do we reject Jesus? when we don't follow his teachings, when we don't share his teachings, when we don't walk the walk, Jesus weeps for us, for you, for me, for each of us. In spite of our rejection of him, Jesus cares for each and every one of us. What the people who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem that first Palm Sunday didn't realize was that God was offering them the opportunity to do much more than stand there and cheer and wave palm branches and throw their cloaks on the dusty road. God was inviting them, inviting us to join in doing something great to journey with Jesus to the cross, to die to self and to live for God and others. Jesus didn't come to make a triumphal entry into a city. He didn't come to conquer a nation. He did not come as a strong armed king who demanded total will and obedience. Jesus gives us the free will to choose. Jesus came as a humble servant to each of us. Palm Sunday is a great day to think about what it really means 
to welcome Jesus into our hearts. A great time to think about what are the true treasures that we have been given. Palm Sunday is a great time to become a follower of Jesus Christ, not just along the happy parade route, but all the way up that hill to the cross. There's no such thing as spectator Christianity. I want to share a story that I had read. It's the story of a young woman who came to the pastor's office seeking advice and help. She and her husband had both lost their jobs. They were fighting because of that. The bank was threatening to take away their cars and their home. Their son was in an automobile accident and was in danger of losing a leg. The pastor prayed with her, reminding her about the hope that God gives in hopeless situations. So she started attending the church faithfully for about a month. And suddenly she quit coming. The pastor saw her one day at Walmart and commented that she hadn't been seen in church for the last few weeks. So the pastor said, how are things going? She said, everything's better now. My husband and I have both been rehired. Our relationship is better. Her son was doing fine on both legs. And she closed the conversation by saying, you probably won't be seeing me at church anymore. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was just worrying too much. After all, things just have a way of working themselves out. We shout, save us. Save us. Get us through this pandemic. Help us. And God does. What then do we do? To whom do we give the glory? Or do we? Does our shouting Hosanna stop? When we shout out, save us, do we also then look forward in hope? Jesus came as a servant who took our shame and sin on the cross so we could be free forever. If we are silent, the stones will cry out. Friends, may we continue to shout Hosanna as we follow Christ to the cross and beyond. Let us pray. A God of unfailing love, we come before you on this day with thankful and joyous hearts because your love knows no bounds, no boundaries, limits, or obstacles, including those of our own making, can stop your loving kindness from following us all the days of our lives. Yet during this week, your story of passion mirrors to us how we have tested your love and spurned your compassion. As we enter into Holy Week, fill us with the strength and gratitude and the assurance that you are with us from now through eternity. Amen. We now join together in the invitation to the table. Friends, God calls us to a feast. The table is set and we will come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south to sit at Christ's table. Compassion, love and grace are poured out like fine wine. We come to share in the richness of God's grace. We come to share both hope and pain to share wisdom and laughter. The table is set, so come let us worship God together. God is with us, God eats with us, God dwells with us. All are welcome at this table. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we come to this table not because we have earned the right to be here, we have come not because we have been good enough or faithful enough to deserve our place. We come because by your grace, you have welcomed us here. Forgive us, O oh Lord, 
when we want to restrict your invitation to those who don't measure up to our standards. Forgive us when we want to limit your grace to those with whom we agree, to our friends, not to our enemies. Ever-living God, we join with your church in all times, in all places, to thank you for creating us in your image, for caring for us, and for all of your creatures. Holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin has scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced us as your own, and you sent prophets and priests and judges and kings to call us to right living. And you sent us Jesus, your beloved one, to bring us new life. We lift before you all of those concerns which fill our hearts. We pray for everyone who has been affected by this pandemic. We pray for those without homes. We lift up those who are facing eviction and homelessness. We pray for our refugees and the children that are in our country without family. We pray for our politicians that they find ways to work together for the common good and that they unite to assist all who are struggling. We pray for our nation and this terrible divide. Help us to find common ground. And we pray that we are able to put away our pettiness and our anger and become instruments of your peace. Gracious God, some of our family members and friends are having a really tough time and to them, for all of them, we lift up to you. We lift up all those who are fighting health issues. Continue to bless the medical workers that they may be wise and effective. Give our loved ones strong bodies and upbeat spirits and bring your healing and wholeness. We pray for all who are struggling with mental and spiritual issues, for people whose minds are consumed with worry over finances. Now, this is a terrible time and a difficult life and so we cry out for help. Help us to be constantly in prayer with you. We pray all, for all those who mourn the death of a loved one. Lord, we know these petitions are barely scratching the surface of our concerns. Strengthen us in our life's journey that we may walk with you. Hear the prayers of our hearts. And as we celebrate this sacrament, this gift, as we take this bread and this cup, remind us of the height and depth and breadth of your love and your mercy. May we find here the wisdom to celebrate and live a vision of your kingdom, a kingdom which cares for old and young and all in between. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord, using the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, on the night before Jesus was to be betrayed by his friends, he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to all to eat, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Also after supper, he took the cup. After he had given thanks, he gave it to all to share, saying, this cup is a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you.
And this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and continue to keep you in his grace. Amen. When you leave this gathering, sing out strong. Let your lives proclaim the strong news of God's love. However popular or unpopular the cause, we wish to follow Jesus Christ. God overlooks our past and sends us into the world as representatives of the good news God is in Christ, bringing wholeness and reconciliation into a broken world. Cry out, people of faith, rejoice and praise God. We have been commissioned and empowered to make a difference in the world. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might, but he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't going to be what they wanted, and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, Crucify! Pilate asked Jesus, Are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our King. <laughs>